Call the meeting in order. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Buckner? Here. Reverend Campbell? Here. Mr. Hood? Here. Mayor Jones? Here. Mr. Mayo? Here. Vice Mayor Miller? Here. Mr. Saunders? Here. Mr. Vogler? Here. Mr. Whittle? Here. We have an invocation by Larry Campbell, Jr., followed by a Pledge of Allegiance. Would everybody please stand? <clears throat> Can we bow our heads, please? Dear Heavenly Father, our God, and our Savior, Lord, we just want to say unto you, we thank you for just how good you have been to <clears throat> our city and to this region. With all of the calamities across our nation and the problems of this world, you have been so good to the citizens here in Danville. We thank you for all of the employees who secure and to serve the citizens of our community. We thank you for the mayor and the city council. We pray tonight that your wisdom and understanding will be with us as we shall make the decisions that will affect the citizens of our community. And we shall give you glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just want to thank Councilman Campbell for that fervent and effectual prayer. Thank you, Councilman Campbell. Communications from visitors. I want to say good evening to everyone. If those of you who are viewing, we welcome you. Those in the chamber, good evening to you. Communications from visitors, citizens who desire to speak on matters not listed on the agenda may come forward at this time. Citizens who desire to speak on agenda items will be heard when the agenda item is considered. Is there anyone who would like to speak on any item that's not on the agenda? You may come forward at this time and please state your name and your address for the record. Anyone who would like to speak on any item not on the agenda may come forward at this time. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tommy Bennett, Seminar Trail, President NAACP. Um, I would like to say um, it's, I've gotten a, a lot of telephone calls within the, since the 1st of March. I think it's when it hit the market. And I don't know whether you all are aware of the Danville Opoly game, just like Monopoly. And um, it's a lot of complaints that the game has left out a whole segment of our community. And um, I don't know whether anybody has received the game. I went over and uh, purchased the game from Walmart and found out that uh, it, it did leave out a lot of Danville, and it left out the black community. Um, it has City Hall, but it doesn't have the Ruby Archie Library. It has Union Street Bridge, but it doesn't have the MLK Bridge. It has George Washington High School, but it doesn't have Langston. It has Dan Daniel Park, and it does not have Camilla Williams Park or Doyle Thomas Park. Just just a few to name. And uh, I think it's something to look at. Uh, I know it's on the shelves at Walmart, and I, don't, I will just want to make the city council aware that the community, and I've gotten calls from Everyone in the community, uh, whites, blacks, everyone, has called to see had I received the game. Um, and so I went over and I purchased, and I saw it for myself firsthand. So just if you haven't seen, but uh, I didn't know, because it has city buildings, and I didn't know whether or not whether the city had placed because uh, it doesn't even have the Charles Harris finance building, which we all pay our utilities and taxes. So um, when I saw, and at first I wasn't going to bother with it, but after I saw all the city buildings on the games, but none were there 
that address our community. So I just want to make you aware of that. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you so much for being on the call today with me with the, at the governor's office today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Can we comment on that, uh, Mayor? Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I hadn't purchased the game, and I didn't have any idea what was on it, but I'm very disappointed. And uh, I don't know if council, we can't prohibit somebody from selling something uh, that, but we can express our extreme disappointment that these uh, uh, important buildings and places, even the bypass, you know, uh, is named after a, a prominent uh, African American. Uh, that uh, I don't know if it's possible to explain our, you know, our extreme disappointment and uh, concern, and wish that this company would, uh, whoever put it out, would make modifications. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. I'm Barry Copland, and uh, I've been here in Danville probably longer than most of you. I wanted to add to what Tommy had to say uh, about this game and, and some of the impact that it had on people like me, like all of us, I would think. <clears throat> when I was teaching at the community college, I had a class in controversial issues, and one of our classes was to debate. Part of my class would debate yes, and part would debate no, whether Walmart was damaging or causing to fail all the little businesses that surrounded it. And that class was very excited about that, especially the people who were going to be on the side that said it did. I went to the general manager of Walmart's store here in Danville. I told him what we were going to do, and I asked whether he would like to be part of our debate. He not only said, yes, he'd like to be part of it, he said that he was very interested in seeing what the outcome would be. He came to my class and offered to help the team that was arguing that Walmart hurt the businesses around it. As you can imagine, the debate was quite honest and quite intense because my students had done their homework. It turned out that when the debate was over, we all got together and talked about the final result. The final result was that Walmart didn't hurt the businesses. If anything, it brought more business to the little businesses that surrounded it. The reason I mention that is, I think, because Walmart is so community concerned about being in Danville, that they would have been very concerned had they been aware of the limitations of this particular game. They would have seen what was missing. And my thought is that if those people at Walmart were approached and were told about it, they would say, let's stop producing this game until the necessary changes are made. Uh, that's what I'd like to leave you with. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We're still in communications. Any person who desires to speak on any item that's not on the agenda, you may come forward at this time. Anyone who else who would like to speak on any item that's not on the agenda may come forward at this time. Under meeting minutes, Council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Buckner? May I like to make a motion that we approve the meetings from the regular meeting held on February 2nd, 2021. There are seconds by Councilman Whittle. Discussion of the motion? Madam Clerk, if you don't mind, call the roll, please. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Under new business, consideration of rezoning 255 Ranch Drive from TR Threshold Residential to SR Sandy River Residential, I open the public hearing. Anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Councilman Vogler? Yes, Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance rezoning 255 Ranch Drive parcel ID number 70900 from TR Threshold Residential to SRR Sandy River Residential. Second by Councilman Buckner. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. 
On item B, consideration of grant a special use permit for a maximum density waiver at 618 Craghead Street. I open the public hearing. Anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Councilman Buckner. May I'd like to make an ordinance. We, I'd like to make a recommendation that we approve an ordinance granting a special use permit application 2021-6 for maximum density waiver in accordance with Article 3.L, Section C.13 of the Code of the City of Danville, Virginia, 1986, as amended at 618 Craghead Street, parcel ID number 21748. Second by Councilman Whittle. Discussion of the motion? Councilman Whittle. Yes, yeah, sir. Can someone tell me what the, what the difference between the um, maximum density waiver is versus what we have in place now? Could someone from staff please come to the microphone and Councilman Whittle, if you can repeat your question. Sure. I just want to know what the difference between the maximum density uh, waiver is versus what they have in place now. Um, I believe it's <clears throat> in the staff report. Let me get to my file. Uh, the um, they're proposing 57 units per acre, and we have a residential density of 24 units per acre in that district. Don't know what we're going to do if it, the, the parking problems that we have. If we're shifting these, excuse me, if we're, if we're shifting these around a, a little bit, um, and I know we have a parking um, issue downtown, um, so it gave you double. Which it gave them double what they wanted for the. Oh, excuse me. It gives you about double the parking spaces. It will generate approximately twice the parking as without the waiver. Um, that said, with our recently completed parking study of that area, shows a substantial surplus at this point in time. I was surprised there was about 3,000 um, city-owned spaces in the city from the um, from tell anybody that's got a business downtown that, but I, I, I do realize that. We are working on that regularly. My, my concern is, again, the stacking up of the parking, and we'll keep an eye on it. Thank you. Yes, sir. And your, your answer is there is ample parking spaces downtown. Uh, we believe adjacent to this development. Great. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything else, Councilman Whittle? No, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Hood. Aye. Mayor Jones. Aye. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Bogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. On item C, consideration of granting a special use permit for a garbage transfer station at 461 Gypsum Road. I open the public hearing. Anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward this time. Anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward this time. Please state your name and your address for the record, please. Good evening. My name is Nick Setliff. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at First Piedmont Corporation. Um, this property in question was originally designed and built as a transfer station. It was operated by Waste Management when the City of Danville closed their landfill in the 90s. Um, we'd simply like to reinstate that. The purpose being we have an existing landfill in uh, our Ringgold landfill. Um, we're reaching a point where it's time to either uh, rebuild that building or use the existing facility we have at Gypsum. Um, so that's that's what we'd like to do. Thank you both for being here. Thank you so much. We're still in public here, and anyone else would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Anyone else who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Councilman Vogler. Yes, Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance granting special use permit application 2021-10 for a garbage transfer station in accordance with Article 3Q, Section C, 
22 of the zoning ordinance of the code of the city of Danville, Virginia, 1986, as amended at 461 Gypsum Road, parcel ID number 76479. Second by Councilman Hood, discussion of the motion. Councilman Campbell. Uh, Mr. Uh, city Manager, if I can ask you a question, please. The history on, on why the landfill was closed, was there any environment dangers to that? that you the, the existing, uh, the well, our former landfill is monitored right now uh, for <coughs> certain conditions. I, I don't know the exact details, but it's all under compliance um, and regulated appropriately. But it, it, I don't know if it might have just been closed because, uh, frankly, I, I don't, I don't have that information. I wasn't around when it was closed. But a, a lot of older landfills are just closed because they're full, uh, and it's more efficient and more uh, environmentally sound to work uh, with others who have established lined landfills in other locations. But I don't really know the history for sure about this one. That was my question, Mr. Mayor. I'm just wondering. Okay. The attorney wants to. Pardon me? Anything else? Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Under item D, consideration of granting a special use permit for a minimum yard requirement waiver at 2291 Memorial Drive. I open the public hearing. Council, what's your pleasure? Oh, I'm sorry. I open the public hearing. Anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward this time. Anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Saunders. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I'm correct, this is the one where a uh, request has been made, and I support the request, but one of the responders talked about her, she has a seven-year-old child, and a lot of children play in the backyard uh, near, and that's near where this request is being made. So I'm just wondering if that issue has been addressed by staff with the neighbor requesting uh, this uh, waiver or what needs to happen to make sure that her children are taken care of and they're safe. Can come forward. Our Councillor Saunders, uh, we have not addressed this particular concern yet, but we will reach out and connect the petitioner and with the property owner that uh, had the concern and try to see if there's any sort of mitigation or resolution that can happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was second. It's Council, what's your pleasure? Council, what's your pleasure? Anybody want to make a motion? Councilman Saunders? Uh, <laughs> yes, I move approval. Um, are we talking on E? Yes, sir. Sure. Um, well, D. 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 Federation of uh, Move approval of an ordinance granting special use permit application 2021. Uh, that 33 for minimum yard requirement waiver in accordance with Article 3.1, Section C-19, Code City of Danville, Virginia, 1986, as amended at 2291 Memorial Drive, parcel ID number 51478. Second by Councilman Mayo, discussion of the motion. Just so everybody understands what's happening here, this is the police department. And all that's happening is the minimum, there's a minimum amount of space between two buildings but the way the police department is designed they're actually going to be closer than that so there should be no effect on the neighbors because all this is doing is making that those buildings being as close together as they're designed to be to be just legal under our city code so it shouldn't, it shouldn't affect anybody thank you for clearing it up thank you so much on the item e consideration of granting a special use permit for an accessory use at 864 monument street Wait. I uh, open. Mr. We we might need to vote on that. Final oh, <laughs> call a roll. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Whittle. Aye. Aye. 
Buckner? I, James Buckner, must abstain from voting on this due to the Conflict of Interest Act of the State of Virginia. Aye. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Under item E, consideration of granting a special use permit for an accessory use at 864 Monument Street, I open the public hearing. Anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Please state your name and your address for the record, please. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, Mike Herbert with DeLorean Power. Um, my address is 210 Westman Drive, Alexandria, Virginia. Um, here on behalf of my company, we've been developing this project in collaboration with Jason Gray and Danville Utilities. It's going to be used to uh, dispatch the battery during peak events, kind of saving the, the city a lot of money during the um, on their wholesale electricity costs. So just here um, to introduce myself, uh, appreciate your consideration of this matter, and happy to take any questions you guys have. Councilman Saunders. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And looking at the package, I think one person was not in favor of this request, but they did not give a reason. Any idea what their concern may be? Uh, I would, <laughs> I don't think I'd like to speculate, but uh, no. Yeah, if you, if I, you don't know, you don't know. Yeah, I, I genuinely don't know. But thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're still in public hearing. Anyone who would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Council, what's your pleasure? Council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Buckner. Now I'd like to make a motion that we approve an ordinance getting, granting a special use permit application 2021-34 of an accessory use in accordance with Article 3.L, Section C.14 of the City of the Zoning Ordinance of the Code of the City of Danville, Virginia, 1986, as amended at 864 Monument Street, parcel ID number 24916. Second by Councilman Mayo. Discussion of the motion, Councilman Whittle. Anything? I'll uh, pass. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Under item F, consideration of amending chapter two of the Danville City Code to add an ex officio member to the Danville Utilities Commission, Vice Mayor. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to propose an ordinance amending and reordaining sections 2 267 entitled Composition, Appointment, and Qualifications of Members of the Utility Commission, 2 268 entitled Terms of Members, Filling of Vacancy, and 2 271 entitled Chair and Vice Chairman of the Article 11 entitled Utility Commission as Chapter 2 entitled Administration of the Code of the City of Virginia, 1986, as amended. Second by Councilman Buckner, discussion of the motion. Councilman Vogler. <clears throat> yeah, I just want to um, say real quickly that um, we discussed this a few years ago. I, I thought it made sense then. I thought it was a good, good idea, and I still think it's a good idea. Uh, Pennsylvania County residents make up, I think, somewhere close to 40% of, uh, of the customer base for Danville Utilities. They're, they're a large part of it. Uh, we talk a lot about regional cooperation. Um, you know, these uh, folks in the county are, are very much a part of everything that we do, and so it only makes sense for them to have a seat at the table uh, when uh, these, these utilities discussions are had. And I know it's, it's something that's on a lot of folks' mind right now, how much they pay in their utility bills, whether you live in the city or you live in the county. Um, so it's an important issue, and so I think it's important that uh, we have county representation on it. I'm glad we're voting on it tonight. I think we're going to pass it tonight. Uh, I'm going to be voting in favor of it. It makes sense. It's important. Uh, that uh, our customers in Pennsylvania County have a seat at the table for these utility discussions. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Saunders. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. We already have uh, one position on utility commission, and that person does not have to be a Danville City resident. And the request tonight is to ask someone from Pennsylvania County Board of Supervisors understood they would not, they would not be a voting member. While I am not opposing the motion, it's my understanding utility commission often talk about matters of economic development. And that is a very, very private matter for all jurisdiction in the United States, Danville, Pennsylvania County included. I'm reminded when Pennsylvania County had an organization of economic development, it was called PEDO, Pennsylvania Economic Development Organization. I served on that board of directors. 
for 11 years. I can tell you when I became an elected official for Danville City Council, when the meetings were held and matters were discussed regarding Pennsylvania County only economic development, I excused myself. I did not think I should be in that room as a Danville City Council member while Pennsylvania County talked about economic development for its sole county. So while I'm supporting the motion, yeah. I'm hoping and I'm asking, quite frankly, should that occur in Danville, we're talking about development, specifically for the city, that the Pennsylvania County person may be appointed, would please excuse himself or herself. That's my request. City manager. I did it, and I hope they would too. City manager, I hope you um, noted that request. Yes, I did. Thank you, Councilman Saunders. And Can I comment uh, on that? I'll make sure that uh, that request is made. Thank you. At the time. Yeah. Councilman uh, Saunders, um, back to you. Anything else? Uh, no. Thank um, you, Councilman Buckner, then Councilman Willow, then Councilman. Can I Vice comment Mayor. on his comment? Huh? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, as he pointed out, it's a non voting member. Uh, the. Uh, in consultation with our attorney, I don't think we can require them to be excused themselves, but they're under all confidentiality uh, restrictions. So if that we go into closed session and they choose to remain in there, it's just like meetings we have with Riff and so forth. They have to keep things confidential. Now, they have the right to <coughs> excuse themselves. They can say, I'm not interested in getting into discussion because it doesn't involve the county. But we, I don't think we can require them to excuse themselves. So may I make a suggestion, Mr. Attorney? In those meetings, can there be a document signed by the individual stating, just like they do at RIFA, that, that all business matter must be confidentiality? We certainly can do that. In fact, it might not be a bad idea, since they're not city council, to have each of them sign. They don't go into closed meeting for very often. They, it's, it's even... Uh, very fewer times that they go in for economic development. So that's a, we, we will make sure that there's a document signed by each member of the commission if we go in for economic development. Sounds good. Councilman Saunders. Mr. Mayor, could we at least ask for a gentleman's agreement or a gentle agreement to respect the privacy of a single jurisdiction if that person has no residential uh, address there? Oh, I, I certainly think we can. I think we can do that, and that the, probably the proper protocol is for the manager to address the administrator. Uh, but but what I was just saying is we we can make if they choose to stay in, we can make them sign a confidentiality agreement. I like you would hope that they would step out because that's what I would do. For the record, Mr. Mayor, I want to make it clear: I am not opposing this recommendation. In fact, I am voting for it. I was born and raised in Pennsylvania County. I worked in Pennsylvania County for 42 years. I'm an elected member now of Danville City Council. I respect the county's privacy, and I certainly hope that we can get the same respect for our city. That's all that is. Well, I, I want to thank you for your wisdom because this is something that we didn't think about, and thank you for bringing it to the table. Thank you so much, Councilman Saunders. Councilman Buckner, then Councilman Whittle, then Councilman Miller, and Councilman Campbell. Councilman Buckner. Yeah, real quick. Um, I think that uh, this is a great thing. I think that, that the county, as, as was stated before, makes up about 40% of our customers from the utility department. And I think it's a great time. For, and, and I think it's about time that they have some representation on our, on our board as well. Um, to, to Mayor Saunders' uh, point, uh, you worked really, really hard, and a lot of folks in this room worked really, really hard to uh, build relationships with Pennsylvania County, and I dare say it is a different time in Danville and Pennsylvania County than it was when you were first elected to City Council uh, some years ago. Um, and I'd like to think that that we are, uh, we do have a much, much, much better relationship than what was had back then. And uh, I don't think anyone would have an issue with a gentleman's agreement. I think it's a great idea. I'm glad that, as, as Mayor Jones said, thank you for your wisdom and guidance in that. And uh, it is a different time. Hallelujah, it's a different time for us in Pennsylvania County. We work very well together. Uh, and I think we'll continue to do so in the future. Thank, thank you, you, Councilman Buckner. Councilman Whittle. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I thought that there was a, a seat available for a either a Pennsylvania County resident or it could be a board of supervisors it could be anybody to sit in that position 
Is that right? Cock, cock, is that correct? Can any person that either they can be an elected official or non-elected official serve in that capacity? As, as far as I understand, yes, it's it's Pennsylvania County's choice, or, or well, actually, it's the city council's choice because this is a person that does not is not a member or lives in the city limits. So it could be somebody from Halifax County that gets electricity, somebody from Henry County or Pennsylvania County, and I don't think it's limited uh, or no. uh, elected officials. It's, it's basically a seat for those folks who receive electricity from the city of Danville and are not residents of the city. And Clark, correct me if I'm wrong, that position would go to our, our boards and commissions where Dr. Miller chairs, and that's why that selection would have been made and then brought before city council? That's correct. That's, that's the way that position is appointed. Thank you, Clark. Ken? So the current code, not amended at this point, allows for one member who is not in the city limits and then one member at large which means that that second person could either be in the city or out of the city That's so correct. up to two members can be county residents and those are voting members what's under consideration here is to have a pennsylvania county board of supervisor member as an ex officio member which is similar to what uh, the city council has with dr miller on the board so that it's a non-voting member so it's slightly different madison back to you and that that straightened up a little bit. Thank you. Lee, you want to piggyback, and then Sherman want to piggyback, and then I'm coming to you, Dr. Miller. Yeah, I can address some of it, but I, I did just want to point out, so what currently exists, it could be a person in Pennsylvania County, but it's not required to be a Pennsylvania County person. So theoretically, there could be, and, and I don't know if there have been at time, no Pennsylvania County representation. Because, again, it could be, but doesn't have to be, correct? That, that, that's correct. I mean, theoretically, you could have a Henry County member and a, and a Halifax County member and no Pennsylvania <coughs> County member, but I don't recall the time where we didn't have at least one Pennsylvania County uh, member on, on the commission. And, and thank you for that. And I, I just want to point that out because, uh, again, while it is the possibility for uh, voting members to be from Pennsylvania County, those, those particular positions you mentioned, it is not required that they are from Pennsylvania County. Therefore, depending on whoever is in charge at the time, there could be nobody uh, from Pennsylvania County. And all we're talking about tonight is a non-voting position. So again, they, they're not a voting member, but uh, will have the ability to be in the room for the discussions. And again, with it being an elected official, uh, you know, it, it's, it's someone who's directly accountable to Pennsylvania County residents for them to have a, a representative there at the meetings to, to weigh in on, not to vote on it, but to weigh in on it, to be in on the discussions. And I think maybe even more importantly, to be able to go back to their citizens and explain that, you know, to have firsthand account of why decisions are made the way they are, why things are a certain way they are. I just think it's a good thing um, to, to, again, improve relationships. They're already, as, as Councilman Buckner mentioned, um, have grown tremendously just in the years that I've been here, the, the relationship between the city and the county. Um, and we talk more and more about regional cooperation, but to have someone in the room who can then go back to the folks that they represent in Pennsylvania County and say, uh, here's what's happening, here's why it's happening, uh, here's where it's going in the future, and to be able to have a firsthand account for that, or to be able to go into those meetings and ask questions for their citizens and our customers who live in Pennsylvania County. So again, I'm fully in support of it, um, and I just wanted to, to clear that up in case there was any confusion. Thank you. Councilman Saunders going to pick it back. Councilman Whittle going to pick it back. Dr. Miller, I'm coming to you and Councilman Campbell. Councilman Saunders. Thank you. Am I correct, uh, Mr. Whitfield or uh, Mr. Larkin, that this would be two positions on this commission that would not necessarily be Danville City residents? Is that correct? It would be, it could be, that's correct, because, the, because there is a requirement that somebody who gets their power from or their utilities from Danville be on the commission, but they can't live in the city limits. So that's one. And then there is the possibility, as Mr. Larking said, that the at-large member also at times has switched back and forth between being a member, uh, a citizen of Danville and a citizen of Pennsylvania County. So that's correct. Second question is, am I correct that tonight the specific request is that one member of the Pennsylvania County Board of Supervisors be appointed. While they may not have a vote, but it's not just anyone, it's one of the seven supervisors. Is that correct? That's correct. I, I believe it also has to be, maybe I'm not right, but uh, it, somebody who's in an area served by the utility as well, right? Or, well, that's what you would hope, yes. 
The answer to Councilman Saunders' question is yes. The, yeah, the answer to Councilman Saunders' question is yes. <laughs> that is correct. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much. Councilman Willow, you want to piggyback off that? Yeah, my point is, is how many times have they showed up to the meetings before when the seat's been available? Well, I'll tell you if you want. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you in a few minutes, Dr. Miller and I, and I think that's what Dr. Miller is waiting on to tell you how we got here. We had a small retreat, so we'll be able to answer that question. Dr. Miller and I can answer that question for you in just a minute if you give Dr. Miller a chance because he's next. Is that okay? Dr. Miller? Well, this is a request from the county. Uh, you know, it, it, I think it's to build good, well, it is to build good relations with the county. Uh, and as Mr. Vogler says, it, it gives the county residents somebody they know and have access to to uh, when they have uh, utility issues. And uh, so, um, again, it's a, it's a goodwill gesture in, in a way by the, by the city and with our relations. And again, it's a non-voting member. They can make comments. They don't have a vote, just as I don't have a vote. Uh, but we're there to, to gather information or give information. So uh, the purpose of this was to improve relations with the county. Thank you, Councilman Campbell. Yes, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilman Sherman, I have a question for you. I, I, I don't fully understand what you're saying. Um, maybe I just, it's not hitting the dots for my mind yet. Uh, you're saying that when concerns come up in reference to the city of Danville, it'd be better for that person to step out of the meeting? That would be the way that I would see it. That is what I actually did when I served on a Pennsylvania County Board because I had just gotten elected to the Danville City Council. They were discussing economic development issues for Pennsylvania County only. And I felt, and they agreed by the way, that it was inappropriate that I be there, okay, in that meeting. So I excused myself and they agreed with that. So what I am saying is, looking at the package we received for tonight's meeting, it's a statement in that package that says, sometimes the Utility Commission talk about economic development matters. That's the reason why, the that's reason the why same I ex thing that happened when I was there. I'm, I'm supporting the motion. Okay, because I, I, I believe too. in regional yeah. partnership. I just, I'm just concerned that the privacy we may need, okay? I want to make sure that that privacy is respected. The reason why I asked the question for clarity, because we, or I am, I think most of councilmen are programmed for regionalism. And we are basically not isolated now, especially on utilities. So in reference to the concept of regionalism, and the separation of counties and the uh, city. Could you go just a little bit more detail? Or do you think that does not affect that? No, I'm, I'm you know, when I ran for city council, each time I ran, my motto was, and I quote, regional cooperation. Regional cooperation. And I chose that motto because at the time I ran in 1996, people, some people, still had not gotten over the mid-1980s when annexation took place. It was very, very ugly. So my goal was to try to help bring the city and the county back together by working together. And we did some things like that. One come to mind is, 41, the Mount Herman Road. The county had money to come to the city line and didn't stop. And I, as city council, used some of our funds to expand that improvement on Mount, uh, on 41, which is now we have the bypass over to 29. That's just one example among many. Then we had the damn dog, then we had the, um, we, we, the business incubator, DRBDC, Dan River Business Development Center. Then we had that. Now we have the Institute, which we all share as well. Now we have the RIFA, which we all share as well. So we have that partnership 
And, and that was my, got my goal to be a part. Sherman didn't do it, okay? It took a group effort. But I was one of the people in that group. I am trying to maintain that, okay? We can still work together. We do have a huge Berry Hill Park jointly owned by the city and the county. And to show the good faith to build that partnership, that Berry Hill Park cost $13 million. Danville's share was $6.5 million. Pennsylvania County's share was $6.5 million. The city of Danville paid the entire $13 million, which included Pennsylvania County's share, and Pennsylvania County did reimburse, okay, did reimburse the city of Danville. I know that because I was the mayor and I signed that document for the check to be written. So I ran for regional cooperation, and I'm still trying to maintain and improve, increase regional cooperation. I just think that if you're talking about something in your house that's none of my business, I shouldn't be in there. Okay? That, that, that's the bottom line. So I'm, I'm voting for this, but I'm just simply saying, please show us the respect, and I think they will, that we did or that I did for the time that I served on their board. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Attorney. Uh, I, and I, and I, thank you for the question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate to muddy up the waters, but uh, Councilman Saunders actually mentioned something that I think should be added to the code section. So we might want to amend this motion to say that not only are they a Pennsylvania County Board of Supervisors member, but they are also a customer of the Danville, of Danville Utilities. Uh, in addition to that, because I don't know if somebody from Mecklenburg Electric Co-op is necessarily going to be interested in serving anyway, but it might not be a bad idea. If you can write that down while we're having this dialogue and pass it over. All you just need to do is move to amend the resolution requiring the person to be a customer of Danville Utilities. Mr. Mayor, so move. Move there. Second by Councilman Buckner. Discussion of that motion. Do we need to call the first motion? We need to call the motion for the amendment and then the original motion as amended. <laughs> Let us vote on the amended motion. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll, please? Saunders? Yes. Mr. Vogler? Yes. Mr. Whittle? No. Mr. Buckner? Yes. Reverend Campbell? Yes. Mr. Hood? Yes. Mayor Jones? Yes. Mr. Mayo? Yes. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Yes. Now we're calling on the, we're voting on the motion. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll on the motion, please? Vogler? Yes. Mr. Whittle? No. Mr. Buckner? Yes. Reverend Campbell? Yes. Mr. Hood? Yes. Mayor Jones? Yes. Mr. Mayo? Yes. Vice Mayor Miller? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Yeah. Let me just pause for a second. I was going to say this in the discussion. Um, Councilman Saunders, thank you so much for that. Dr. Miller and, and myself, along with Ken and the county administrator and the chair and the vice chair of uh, Pennsylvania County Board of Supervisors, had a great mini retreat. I think that's what we can call it. We had a great mini retreat at the airport until the discussion that has been stated by Councilman Campbell, Councilman Buckner, and others. The purpose and the goal of that is to build, continue to build those relationships. So council will know Dr. Miller and I, along with city manager, county administrator, we've also planned a quarterly lunch where we're going to be sitting with the chair, the vice chair, um, city manager, just to continue, as Councilman Saunders stated, continue to build upon those relationships as we built upon. In those county lunches that we're going to be having, we'll probably be having this conversation, sharing with Councilman Saunders stated, and I'm sure with our last mini retreat, I thought it went very well. Ken, what do you think, Dr. Miller? I thought it went very well. I think we're building the relationship even stronger, and I'm per pretty much I'm really excited about it because the Councilman Campbell, that regionalism that you, you you're talking about starts with us as leaders, and that um, first meeting we accomplished a whole lot. That's how this got on the agenda. So I appreciate Council for voting on that. Dr. Miller, you want to add anything? You be, you can be sure we will pass all this discussion on to them and tell them who we think they should appoint, and obviously uh, somebody that um, has electric uh, is serviced by that in their district too. There may be some <laughs> whole districts that aren't serviced by our, the county or by the utility. So we'll pass it on to them. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Communication, city manager.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I thought I'd stand up for this. Uh, I wanted to uh, announce to City Council and frankly to the public that uh, we've uh, established a new vaccination clinic that could serve as a mass vaccination site. Uh, Corey Bobe and I had a meeting with the owners of the mall a couple weeks ago, and they graciously offered the former J.C. Penney site to serve as a permanent, semi-permanent location to have vaccines within our community to serve not only Danville, but really the surrounding area as well uh, for mass vaccinations for really through the rest of the, through the end of the summer, maybe even after that if necessary. Uh, so I wanted to express my appreciation to the folks at the mall uh, for allowing us to use that site. They are offering it to us at no cost, except that we won't cost them anything. So uh, that, that means that we'll cover the utilities. If there is an issue related to the elevator or something, the escalator, we'll take care of that, those kinds of things. But essentially, we're going to have the use of that building for several months to serve as a vaccination site. Uh, and I also want to announce that the team that has been working locally with the health department, the hospital, Pennsylvania County, Averett University, and the city of Danville, uh, they've been working on these clinics up until this point. They're going to have one as well for at, uh, this Friday at JCPenney. Am I missing something? I, I'm getting distracted. You forgot DCC nursing staff. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, and the DCC nursing staff. That's right. Uh, I apologize. They are there. It's, there's a lot of partners involved in all this, and I, I, I'm always afraid that I'm going to forget somebody. But they, uh, uh, yes, we've had many volunteers from many organizations. We've had folks that have gone out into the community to make sure that the underserved have been represented, that have been able, to, that they're able to register for these uh, um, for these appointments. We've had volunteers who have skills with being able to vaccinate. We've had volunteers who are great on computers, can help people register. We've had volunteers that are great at directing traffic. And, and there has been just an incredible amount of community involvement in pulling off these events. And I have great appreciation to all those organizations that, and I'll just repeat them to make sure that I get them all right this time. But uh, it's the, of course, the health department, uh, the hospital, Avery University, DCC, the city of Danville, and Pennsylvania County, all working together pulling together their resources to make these things happen. And, and just for more details on the J.C. Penney site, uh, we secured, we got permission to use the site uh, verbally last week. Uh, we got the uh, actual document Monday uh, that made it, uh, got, got the license agreement in place on Monday. Uh, today is Tuesday. And with the help of all those partners, uh, a lot of city departments, uh, and uh, I could Parks and Recreation, Public Works, Fire Department, Police Department, the IT Department, and others. Uh, we basically have this, and, and Public Utilities, I always forget somebody, uh, <laughs> that we have basically have the site all up and ready, power's on, gas will be on tomorrow, heat will be in that building, the tables are set up, the chairs are set up, signage is in the building, it'll be put up tomorrow, it is ready to go, and it is going to be, it, it's just, all we have to do is bring the people, and we can get them vaccinated. I will point out that the clinics, as we start them out, you do have to pre-register and you do have to get a, an appointment. You can't just show up. So uh, please make sure if, if you do show up, then there is no guarantee and likely you wouldn't get a vaccine. Uh, but uh, if you, uh, we will be targeting the people that have already pre-registered that meet certain criteria for at-risk factors to send an invitation for them to register. We are also going out to the community to get at-risk folks to make sure that they have an opportunity to register. Anybody that has challenges with technology, we're gonna assist those people for a while before it goes out to the broader group. And uh, we're gonna try to, be, to try to handle this in as equitable manner as possible. But I wanted to first to share the exciting news about JCPenney and the folks from the mall. I'm actually gonna meet the owners tomorrow. Uh, with a group of people from uh, the city departments and uh, thank them in person. Uh, they're coming into town. They wanted to see how quick, how we were able to do it so quickly, I think. So uh, I'm, we're excited to host them tomorrow. And uh, again, I want to thank all the partners. Uh, and this is the, just the beginning. The hope is to eventually ramp up the site so that it's done on almost an everyday basis, thousands of vaccines every day until we get our entire community up to herd immunity. Council, when you hear the city manager say he's excited, 
he and I were on the phone. He is excited. He talked about the staff. He talked about the partners. And um, I just want to, you, you thank everybody else. I just want to thank you because both times or several times that you and I have had this conversation, it's so many reasons when you first had that conversation with me. I didn't say this on the phone with you because I think either one of us was about to go to dinner. And when we get on the phone, we stay a long time. But it's also choosing that location. And we know the struggles that we're having at Piedmont Mall right now. But maybe also that'll help retail. Maybe when people get their shots, maybe they go in their shop and bring some businesses in there. But I just want to thank you. The other thing that you said that the call, you heard me earlier mention the call that Tom and I was on in Richmond today. There's a concern that a lot of our senior citizens really can't get into that system. And I'm glad you mentioned that you're going to help them. And so um, you and the team and everybody else continue, please, to work on that. Um, that's what we heard today on the phone. We got a new liaison from Richmond. You're going to be hearing from her. Um, it's a Danville native, Tracy DeShazer. Am I correct, Tom? T Tracy? She's a Danville native. She was on the phone with us today. She's going to, um, the, the governor just appointed her. Um, and um, unfortunately, our senior citizens are having a tough time <laughs> and I, with that electronic piece. And so we had some ideas, and she, she is offering to help us here in Danville because she's excited about Danville as well. So we was on the phone with her quite some time today. But I just want to thank you because um, your leadership, you thanked everybody else, but your leadership and your team's leadership, when you mentioned to me J.C. Penney, with the new building that's going there in front of J.C. Penny, Aspen Dental, and I, I won't give out the restaurant's name right now, but we need to bring some more activity into that area over there, and hopefully somebody will catch that video. So thank you for choosing J.C. Penny. But once again, I don't want to beat it, but um, we love our senior citizens. Let's help them any way possible we can. And you got a lot of smart people on that team that can figure out something because just sending them to that website and you addressed it, um, it's kind of tough. So Dr. Miller. Yeah, uh, the hardest thing is not the vaccinators, it's the technology. My patients are elderly, you just can't do it. Uh, and we're having to help them, but they need help with that part. Uh, now, the, all the websites have gone away except for one, right? And that's the Virginia dot, uh, vaccinate dot Virginia dot gov. Correct. So that's if you're not registered previously, you need to go to that website and get on the list. And uh, I just have to commend you for getting this together this quick. That's amazing. And all the all the people and uh, uh, doing this, and I think I'd recommend that we, you know you have to wait 15 to 30 minutes afterwards. I would I would make a requirement they have to stay in the mall and walk around the mall for at least 30 minutes after the vaccine. <laughs> we, we like to observe them during the 15 to 30. You know that though. I know. <laughs> Dr. Miller said they got cameras in the mall. He can observe them going into Councilman Hood's going right. like this. He can observe them going to the bath and body works. <laughs> right. Councilman Campbell and then Councilman Vogler. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Ken, uh, I had gotten phone calls about complaints that it seemed like there was uh, disparities between certain groups of people. And, um, and I promised that I will, was going to say something tonight, but everything that you said kind of hit right on the head. And there are many concerns about the process. So, this is great, and I hope the citizens understand what you are saying, and that we have a good media sources to make it available as much as possible that we can speed this process, which we tried to accomplish. But I just want to take my head off to you. You, you have solved a concern that uh, was bothering me. Thank well, we also, you. Tommy also um, worked hard with the city manager, and I think we got 500 people from one neighborhood. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tommy. And then this past Friday, we had a mixture of all people at the community market for the second doses of the shot. So the city manager and staff continue to do what you're doing. Councilman Saunders. I thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Larkin, can you say a little bit about the confusion? Now, now we have a vaccine, one dose, you're okay. You still have a two-dose vaccine. We have a statewide portal. You have a lot of uh, pharmacies online saying register will give you your shot. So some people say I'll wait for the one shot. Some people say, well, I'm going to sign up on everything I can sign up on. And I'm wondering that the state portal supersedes everything else or how do people deal with my word 
that confusion of all of these sign up places because they really want to get the shot. Will there be one shot or two? They want to get it, but it's a lot of confusion out there about that. My understanding is that the, the portal is a pre-registration site, so you will get a notification when you have an opportunity to get a vaccine. But if you have an opportunity to get a vaccine at your pharmacy or at your doctor or some other place, go ahead and get it if that's what you want to do. That's my understanding, and Dr. Miller probably yeah, knows more it. about it than me. I'd take, I would, if I was a person that wanted a shot and didn't have one yet, I would take my first opportunity to get it and then I would uh, either the two shot or the one shot, doesn't matter. They're all very effective, apparently 100% effective against hospitalization, which is really all we're trying to do is keep people out of the hospital. I mean, we've all had uh, colds before, which if, by the time you're vaccinated, if it's 100% effective against hospitalization, Dr. Miller, I'm probably speaking way out of turn, <laughs> then at least you're, <laughs> at least yeah. it's, it's somewhat similar at that point. Well, I like your, I like your explanation a lot. Councilor uh, Vogel. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. I, I was going to um, bring this up actually when it was my turn to come up in a little bit, but this seems seems like the time to talk about it now. Um, you, you talk about opportunities and, and things. Um, CVS in in our city and then in Chatham and around us is is made the vaccine available. Uh, in fact, uh, my step grandfather, he's 91 years old. I got him signed up uh, at the end of last week, and he got his first shot yesterday. And um, Quite frankly, to going back to Dr. Miller's point about technology and knowing all this stuff, he's 91 years old. If, if I hadn't have, have gone online and signed up for him, I don't know when his, his time would have come. He's, he's not going to get on a computer and, and do it on his own. So I'm still concerned about folks who, who don't have – they're not going to get on a smartphone. They're not going to get on a tablet or a computer uh, and may not have a family member who can do it for them. Um, so I, I still want to make sure we're reaching them. But I do want to give – and I think Mark uh, – Mark's actually already got it on the screen. So thank you, Mark. Um, for those watching at home, but uh, if you want to sign up for the, the CVS uh, where they're giving the vaccine, it's cvs.com slash immunization slash COVID dash 19 dash vaccine. But it's on the screen for those watching at home or you can catch it later on the broadcast. Mark's got the link up there, but uh, and if you go on there and it's not showing um, any times or whatever, check back again because I've known folks. I posted it on my on my council Facebook page a few days ago, and I've had at least 20 people reach out to me directly and say they were able to get signed up uh, and they got the vaccine within a couple days. They were really happy. Um, you know, they had been pre-registered and were kind of waiting, and then this came. I do want to point out, and I think I forgot to mention it earlier. This is for people 65 and up. Uh, this CVS opportunity, 65 and up, which is still great. We got a lot of folks uh, in the community, 65 and up, who've been trying to figure out where to get the vaccine, and, and this was a quick, easy way for them to get on there. If you get on there and it's not showing a time, keep checking back in, and, and it seems like the Chatham one is staying a little more available. Um, so, you know, if, if you want to go ahead, and, and again, my grandfather, he drove up to, to Chatham to get it, but he's got it, and he's really, really happy about it now, and looking forward to seeing his grandkids and great grandkids and and being able to get out and do things that that a lot of folks hadn't been able to do last the last year so uh, again that link is on the screen um and again but lastly ken thank you thank you thank you thank you so much uh for the work that you've done i said this recently to the newspaper or somebody um the last year during this entire pandemic ken you have led the way tremendously with grace with leadership with uh, poise and and answered every question folks have had, looked for every partnership possible, um, and and taken suggestions from council and, and and other folks and just put it all together. And, and again, I think Danville is is handled this one of the best anywhere around, and and that's a credit to you and the staff and everyone around you. So uh, thank you, Ken. I think you've done a great job. Councilman Vogler. The reason that he's doing such a good job is because I told him, stop calling me with bad news. And now he just calls me with exciting stuff. <laughs> he used to call me and he said, Mr. Mayor, I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he did me that week. He did me like that this week. <laughs> Work on my, my, positive, positive, <laughs> my positive opening statements. <laughs> um, now, when is J.C. Penny? when is the everything will actually start happening at JCPenney. You might have mentioned it. Friday will be, is our planned first clinic. Uh, we're 
we're, we're so confident in our ability to do it that we're, we just went ahead and said we're going to do it, and we've started recruiting volunteers. That's our first step in the process. The second step is to go out and try to get as many people who, like uh, Councilman Volger mentioned, aren't tech savvy, can't sign up. We're going to try to go out in those communities, get as many of those folks signed up as possible. And then typically when we uh, go push it out uh, over the internet by invitation, uh, we use uh, the portal that uh, we can sort by a category will sort by 65 years up and we'll send an email out to everybody and basically it's first come first serve you get an appointment and then you get to go in and that's been our process and it's worked fairly well for us eventually we're going to get to the point where hopefully uh, we'll have more vaccine than people get, and so everybody who wants one will get one quickly but one thing i do want to say and, and people have touched on this uh, the, the, this whole thing has really reinforced something that i do intuitively and that is the importance of community and partnerships that we talk about all the time. If you know, we've got a great community of institutions who have trust within our our city, and they were able to come together and put these events on, trusting that each person involved, each group involved, would would do their part to make it happen. The other part is, it, it's important as an individual to be a member of some kind of community, whether it's a church or a neighborhood group or an organization, a civic club, or some other thing like that, because when you have that kind of support system, then you have people who are able to look out for you when a, something like this happens. Uh, what, the people who fall through the cracks are the ones that are not part of some other kind of community. So I would just say that um, as an individual or a family member, look after people in your neighborhood, look after your family members like uh, Councilman Volger did. If, you've, if you're, you know, if you know you've got somebody in your family or you, a neighbor who you, you figure isn't tech savvy enough to sign up for these things, just volunteer to help do it for them. And, and, and you know, it's a quick process, and you can get somebody vaccinated who really wants to get a vac, who really wants to get the vaccine. So I just, I, I hear stories about that happening all the time, and I just want to encourage more of that. Well, you talk about those partnerships. Even though the partners here we have in this city today, I spent time with Ashton from my Danville baseball and they've already started partnering in the community. He just moved into the community from D Raleigh Durham and today he and I would, he, he got a chance to show for me around today. I won't tell you why, but hopefully he won't. I, I lock my keys in the car. <laughs> mm -hmm. But they have those partners and he's coming into our community and to talk about the wonderful things that he's seen that brought he and the baseball to our community because of those partnerships, because of those relationships, because of the camaraderies. And you, like you said, I'm not going to stop talking about it enough. Partnership, 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 and we appreciate those partners. And thank you again for all that you're doing. Thank you. And I'm going to. I just want to shout out to my to the department heads. Yeah. I I sent out an email and I said this is my. It's my. Uh, this is my number one priority is to get our community vaccinated and whatever we can do as a team to make that happen, let's make that happen. And they have really stepped up. Every department head who I've asked to help has been just, I mean, they drop everything and they, and they do that. And I very much appreciate it. I mean, I'm frankly amazed that in a couple of days we got this thing up and running. That's not, a, that's not even including the emails that you and Earl are returning back that come to me and y'all are responding to those. So thank you for those as well. They, call, they don't understand. I don't think council see all the emails we get from people. So thank you both for that too. Thank you so much, Ken. Appreciate your leadership. Deputy City Manager. City Attorney, thank you for your input this evening. Anything? Uh, nothing, sir. Thank you so much for all you do. City Clerk? Nothing, sir. Thank you for all that you do. Roll call, please. Little? Buffner? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, touch on something that uh, several of us have discussed over the past few years and was brought back to my attention uh, just this past week. Um, and, and Councilman Vogler and I have spoke several times about this over the years, and Mr. Hood, you and I have spoke about it over the years as well. The homeless problem, we, someone spoke about that the other week, and the homeless problems that we have in our city uh, with children and adults and families that are just broken and torn to pieces because of this. One of the biggest reasons I feel like um, that we as a city do not have a place for homeless folks to go other than the homeless shelters. Now, we do have a great homeless shelter right here on Patton Street. They do an excellent job. Uh, I'm not sure the numbers of the folks that they house in there, but it's, they do some really amazing work there. The city of Los Angeles recently uh, opened a homeless community, 
and I think the biggest reason why Danville hasn't done something such as that, or not the biggest reason, but one of the reasons why we haven't is because of the requirements that are uh, in place about um, required square footages to be called a dwelling. So these guys are taking uh, like these Amish style uh, storage shed buildings and turning them into very small, efficient, ener super energy efficient uh, apartments for homeless people to spend the night in. It's a homeless community uh, right in the middle of Los Angeles. And I understand Danville doesn't have the problems that Los Angeles has, but if one person and one child is homeless in, in, in my city, that bothers me to my core. And anything that we could do to help lighten that load, to help people get back on their feet, I'm all for it. And I know all you guys are too. Uh, I'd like for us in the very near future to discuss, we've got, God only knows how many empty lots that the city owns. Um, why can't we take a couple of those, throw 10 or 15 of these things in there and change 10 or 15 families' lives for the better and they can get back on their feet and become productive members of the society and, and, and just get, you, I don't think you guys know the impact that that would have on people to just give them that chance, give them that shot to uh, have a warm place to spend the night or you know, a, a cool place to go in the middle of the summer uh, and, and to just know that they have somewhere to go where the city actually cares about them they, so they know we care, so they know all of our department heads care, so they know that everybody in this city wants them to come and thrive. They wanna get them out of that situation. And um, I think it's high time that we step up and do something very similar to what they've done. And the cost is, is minimal. Um, I think those things in the heart of Los Angeles, they're spending $10,000 a piece for these cottages. We don't need that kind of <laughs> land in Danville, Virginia is not what it is in downtown Los Angeles. So it ought to be a heck of a lot cheaper than that. Uh, that's all a nightmare. Thank you so much. Well said. Thank you. Yes, I want to commend Councilman Buckner for an excellent idea because we do know that the homeless has increased. Uh, I was talking with a pastor uh, this week and he was telling me some things that they did and I was kind of upset with him because he didn't tell me about it until after it was done, but it was New Sandy Creek. Pastor Larry Day honored um, Sherman and his wife for many, many years of service. I thought it was just outstanding that they gave more praise to his wife than they did to him. <laughs> but uh, no surprise. I just, I just, wanted, I just thought that that was great that they did that for the many, many years of service in the community, and it's good to give you flowers while you're here because you're losing some of your hair. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know. I don't know why he's been picking on you tonight. <laughs> But I'm glad it, I'm glad it's you and not me. <laughs> Yours is coming. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Mr. Hood. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I want to speak tonight on my own transparency. Um, due to the weather being nice for some odd days here, I was able to get out in the community safely, talk to citizens. Um, and the key point to that is people were willing to talk even with these masks on and to just walk up on people that you're not familiar with and start talking to them and engaging and asking them about the city and they to respond the way they responded showed me a whole lot. Um, I feel that what a lot of citizens want to see is even more transparency and I want to commend everybody from council to staff today for, um, and just to show appreciation to Mr. Saunders here, Councilman Saunders for bringing up his concern because that was a concern of mine as well to get a better understanding as a new kid on the block. So as a new kid on the block, I've actually been sitting back and I've been a sponge literally and soaking up because I don't wanna necessarily become a city leader. I wanna be a city servant and to be able to adjust and be able to hear things and take things in from the, from the community and constituents. And tonight we showed a lot, I feel, a lot of transparency and a lot of concerns from each council member that actually shows concerns and deep down wanna see what's best for the city. So. That was my transparent moment I wanted to share with you all. Thank you. Mayor? Thank you. Um, just to piggyback off what uh, Councilman Hood just said, 
I'm just like that sponge also because <clears> it's <throat> always gathering information and with cancel here is so much information given and so much to take in. But uh, to add to what's been said tonight, um, Ken, uh, Ms. Larkin, great job on just getting everybody together. The vaccination shots are uh, so important. I've gotten tons and tons of calls and just by uh, sending people in the right direction, telling them what to do, some are able to get um, some help and others are still trying to get that help. But we will um, to see that J.C. Penney site, it's gonna be a site that's open and through the partners that you mentioned, I definitely want to mention one, which is PAVS, who I'm a very big part of, uh, who go out and about with so many places, not only in Danville, Pennsylvania County, Boyton, Martinsville, and uh, the whole surrounding areas, but they're giving out so much with uh, all the other partners also. Um, and that's, um, that's one of the things that I think we have to do uh, is continuing to just give the information, give the information, and you know, even hearing Dr. Miller talk about, I'm always intrigued at hearing him talk about how the vaccination is going, giving us the updates on how it's going and which direction we need to go. It is, we're so glad to have you. And that's so important to us here on Cancel. And, um, and just to see all the collaboration, even with Tommy, with the NAACP, and I see Norma out there in the audience that she does so much in the community. Danville is really, really moving forward to the, what we do and we're doing together. Um, and I always, and I'll leave you with this right here. Um, Buck hit a good point. Uh, Councilman Buckner hit a good point with what he said about uh, our homeless. But I also want to add in there uh, with the transition of offenders coming out of incarceration, some hit that same entity of homelessness. Um, and I'd like to see even more, and I had calls on halfway houses being able to be established for those individuals who don't have a place to live or have lost connections with family um, coming home from prison or incarceration. That's a hard pill to swallow as well as the transition coming back in. So to see both of those things come together, that's a, that's a beautiful thing that I think Danville can do. And uh, as always, Mayor, you're doing a great job because my motto is always teamwork. And the teamwork, with teamwork, everything works. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Miller. Yeah, uh, today, interestingly enough, I got a call from a gentleman in California, a Reverend, excuse me, not a Reverend, but Mr. Arthur Graham, he allowed me to use his name. Uh, so he may have contacted other council members. Uh, but he wanted to know about Danville. Uh, he lives in California, and he's looked up and down the East Coast. Uh, he said from Massachusetts down to the Carolinas, he's not interested in going to Florida. He and his wife wanted to relocate, and one name that kept popping up was Danville, Virginia. Uh, and uh, they said he looked to them like this was a good place, and he wanted to hear from somebody that lived here. Uh, you know, do we think the community, the community is thriving? Do we think it's on the way up? And, of course, I gave him my spiel, you know, I took time out and talked about the new resort casino, the downtown, uh, all the new businesses are coming. And then I found out he and his wife were already, had already talked to a realtor. So uh, it's just amazing that they, out of all the cities uh, along the East Coast, that Danville's popped up there on the radar. Uh, the only one negative thing is apparently some of our website information or the website information is the crime, and the daughter was concerned that the crime was high, and I reassured him many times that the crime was down. He'd heard we had a new uh, police chief and things were going better, but he just wanted to be reassured. So I don't know what we can do to, you know, it's, it, this is, it's like yesterday's news three or four years ago when the crime rates were high, but not now. Uh, but other than that, uh, they're sold on the city and gonna move here from California. Um, so uh, it's just amazing that What's, what's out there about Danville. Uh, and then I want to give a, a shout out to Cecil Bridgeforth. Everybody knows Reverend Bridgeforth. He's, um, he's been before this council many times, always advocating for uh, the people and electric rates and so forth. And um, he, he must, that man has, I don't think he's got nine lives, I think he's got 12 lives. He has bounced back again. He was in the hospital for a long time 
and uh, he's been near death more than once, and he's back again, and he's getting better. So uh, we'll be looking forward to the time where he can come to this podium and regale us again about our utility rates or whatever he, uh, he feels necessary to support the public. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, all council members, Mr. Deputy Manager, uh, Mr. Manager, Mr. Attorney, Madam Clerk, all 1,100 city employees, thank you so much for what you do every single day, and thank your families for supporting you in your gift to our city. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much. Well said. Thank you. Yeah, about a week ago, uh, I had a few uh, citizens who shared a link to an article with me uh, talking about this innovation, innovative uh, solution uh, to homelessness that was was being done out in Los Angeles, and then I further found out there's there's places there's one in Minnesota that's similar, uh, doing some things and all that. And uh, my first thought was to to call Councilman Buckner and say, uh, Councilman, uh, I said. Uh, Buck, I want to send this article to you because it sounds very similar to something that, that uh, you and I had talked about a couple years ago. And he said, Vogue, I'm already one step ahead of you. He said, I'm already, he said, I've already seen it and I'm already looking and planning and working to see what we can do to make it happen. And so Councilman Buckner was on top of it. And as you heard tonight, uh, very, very passionate about it. And um, so I, I'm with him 100% on it. And if uh, I think the first thing is he pointed out we need to do is we need to uh, fix some of the regulations that are in place that have prevented us from doing this in the past, not only for something like this, but for folks who, who uh, may want to have tiny homes. And, and I, don't, I don't think Buck quite went into it, but what, what they're doing with this is they're prefab, they're tiny homes, prefab, they come, they're, they're uh, tailor-made, ready to go. Um, but, uh, you know, you could spend a whole evening just looking up uh, what folks can do with these tiny homes, but in this case, it's solving a problem of homelessness and and uh, a tremendous thing. And again, I, I brought this up a couple meetings ago um, a, a, about what it's doing. Uh, young families in our city, uh, young children in our school system who don't have a roof over their head at night um, is unacceptable. As Councilman Buckner said, it is unacceptable, even if it's just one family, much less the numbers that we're seeing. So I believe we have an opportunity here to solve this. And when I brought it up in the last meeting, I said, I don't, I don't want to just talk about it. I want to do something. I want to do something. And I know that this council wants to do something. And I think Councilman Buckner has presented us with an opportunity to do something. And I'm ready for us to, to move as quickly as possible on doing it. So Councilman Buckner, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for putting this to the forefront. Uh, lastly, I just want to... Uh, say uh, Austin and, and Ryan in the back uh, with the, the Danville baseball team. Folks are going to be hearing a whole lot about uh, here in the weeks ahead. I'm very, very excited, very excited about uh, baseball being back and, and quite frankly, I think might be better than ever. Um, so I just want to tell folks uh, you'll be hearing a lot more about it here in the weeks ahead, but baseball is back in Danville and fun is coming back and it's going to be a, a great summer out at the ballpark. Thank you. Could you help me? I forgot this afternoon when Austin, I was riding up his gas. I didn't offer him any gas money. Can you team up with me? So I, <laughs> I got you. I got thank you. you. <laughs> um, to hear counsel tonight, um, Councilman Saunders, is every, everybody knows my mother passed away, and Miss Eddie has taken me on as her son. And when I listen to counsel, I'm sure Miss Eddie, if she was watching this, she would say to counsel, you are quoting Matthew 25 and 40. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. And hearing us talk about those who are homeless, those who are incarcerated, those who've had some tough times, uh, just to hear counsel talking about um, loving people, um, you hugging people and uniting people because people have really... Um, given second chances, as Barry talks about it, everybody knows that Councilman Mayo is very passionate about um, um, that. But you never know what people are going through, and I want to thank Council because there's a lot of information that you all put out there tonight, as Councilman Hood stated, just to let people know you care about them. Councilman Hood hit it on the head. When you see people in the communities, you don't know what they're going through. 
but just to pause and just say, hey, how you doing? I know you have your mask on. And just speaking to people and being cordial to people. Council, we're turning it around. Um, I talked about Ashton today, but to hear somebody from outside of our community come into our community and council, I want to say to each one of you all, thank you all, because Ashton talked about us today. He said he watched council meetings and he saw the collaboration and he saw the unity among council members. Dr. Miller just mentioned that somebody from California, they're watching, they're seeing what we're doing. And I can't thank you enough because I don't just see you as council members, I see you all as, as brothers sitting with city staff. Uh, Norma, ah, thank you so much for all that you do. I can, I gotta apologize. I don't deal with your staff, but every time I'm in City Hall, I like to go shopping in Norma's office. <laughs> <laughs> so Norma, Norma, thank you so much. We got new people who come into the community and Norma would put some things together for me and we're able to take those and welcome those persons. Now you got to put something together for Ashton. They're right there in the back row behind you. I want to apologize, Council, for earlier. I forgot to do some things, and, and it's the reason why is because I was hanging out. The new businesses are opening in Danville, and I'm excited about it. And I was hanging out, Councilman Saunders, at the Candy Shack on Riverside Drive. <laughs> and I was candy galore. And I, after I left the Candy Shack, I went to the Captain Cook, the new restaurant on Pontiac Forest Road, I got Candy Shack, I went to Captain Hook, and then Councilman Campbell invited me to hang out with him on Old Pine Forest Road at the new funeral home. I didn't like that too well. <laughs> <laughs> so to all of our new businesses that are coming into our community, the Candy Shack, the Captain Cook, and got word today that the Mayflower is opening back up in a couple of weeks. I talked to Gus and Joanne, they're opening back up. We got new businesses coming during a time like this in Danville. Danville is a great place to be. If there's no more good for the community, this meeting is adjourned. We'll take five minutes and give them an opportunity to get set up and then we'll go straight into our...